All right, hi, and welcome back. Tony Steve Vondren here. We are talking in this video about strike three holdings, okay? Strike three holdings. And this is one of the things that's going to pop up. Usually, the party plaintiff, the plaintiff is going to seek early discovery. Now, as I've noted here, what is early discovery? This is discovery. Normally, when you're in federal court, you have to have a meeting between the counsel, if there's two parties or three parties or four, a meet and confer process to kind of go over the timing and the types of uh, discovery you're going to need and the timing of that and, and so forth. And then usually the judge reviews that and approves that, uh, maybe with some modifications. But um, usually that's the normal process before you run around and engage in discovery. But in strike three holdings cases, these are the illegal file sharing cases brought as copyright infringement cases for sharing their adult video content through BitTorrent protocol, okay? So um, there is precedent. I want you to know this. I want to tell you two things. One, I want to tell you that there is precedent uh, as to what is required when you want to go around this normal rule. And I'm going to tell you, too, um, the, the uh, ability to enforce that actually in court, okay? So let's take a look, okay? So when a party is seeking to do this, what we call early discovery, district courts in the Ninth Circuit. Now, this is our circuit. This is general legal information only. This is not legal advice. Check your circuits. Um, there's, there are 11 different circuits in the country. Check your circuit in the DC courts. So check your circuits. You may have different rules here in the ninth circuit. Now this covers all your Western states, California, Arizona, Washington, Oregon, Montana, Idaho, Utah, so forth and so on. I think Nevada, I missed, uh, at any rate, it says here, district courts in the ninth circuit apply a three factor test. Okay, a three-factor test for determining whether good cause, whether good cause, look at these words, exists to allow for expedited discovery to identify certain defendants. This is what we call unmasking, okay, ripping the mask off. Who is that? Who is that? Who's it behind the IP address? Who is that person? What's their name? What's their address? the internet subscriber, okay? So they're seeking the name and the identity address of the of the internet subscriber okay they do not know yet is this the is this the actual infringer or is this just a subscriber who did not do the infringement could be other things could be like a group home or fraternity house you don't know who's who or maybe you have some overnight guests maybe there's a unsecure wi-fi things like that things where somebody else may be the subscriber okay all right. So this is the case, Columbia Insurance Company versus C's Candy. Boy, does that make me hungry. Here's the three-factor test. Let's take it out. Now, this may pop up in your case. Uh, first, the plaintiff should identify the missing party, that's your John Doe, with sufficient specificity. Usually they do that with an IP address, such that the court can determine that the defendant is a real person or entity who could be sued in federal court. So usually not a problem with that. Again, every case is different. Second, the plaintiff must describe all previous steps taken to locate the elusive defendant. Now, I guess that assumes a defendant is trying to be elusive, but um, plaintiff must describe all previous steps taken to locate the elusive defendant to ensure that a plaintiff has made a good faith effort to identify the defendant. Okay, so this may, this may be a question in your case. What have they done? Um, as we see now, they are, they are, strike three is filing these Miami-Dade County in Florida, what they call the Bill of Discovery case. Um, so that is a previous step taken. So um, you may want to look and see if that's in your complaint or not. Are they discussing that? And finally, this is the one I wanted to talk about. If you haven't seen my video on Cobbler, Cobbler, Nevada case, Google attorney Steve Cobbler, Nevada. And I talk about the Cobbler case. The Cobbler case is pretty simple. Basically said, you know, you can't really just sue somebody because they're an internet subscriber. That really doesn't prove that they've done something wrong, such as copyright infringement or illegal file sharing, that kind of thing. Um, it just means that they happen to be the subscriber, okay? Plaintiff third. Plaintiff should establish that its lawsuit could withstand a motion to dismiss. Now that's really interesting because what you will see in these cases is they will point out that the Cobbler case was a case that got past early discovery 
But the Cobbler case was not really a discovery case. It was a case on the standard on motion to dismiss. So I try to distinguish that. And I think that's in a very important um, distinction if we're going to follow this three-factor test. Um, so, I mean, again, uh, technology changes, but here's the rule right here set for you. Columbia Insurance case, three-factor test, Northern District of California, 1999. Now, different districts may follow different rules. Um, so, but there you have it. Um, third plaintiff may establish now with cobbler, they need to show something more. Well, obviously you can't show something more until you get a chance to show something. So that's really where the state of these cases are. Many courts, many, many, there was one in San Diego that did not, um, approve of the early discovery. There was one that I noticed that seemed to focus on um, so I think it was step two that was focused on. I have another video on that if you want to read it uh, or view it. Just Google Attorney Steve, strike three videos. You'll probably find my videos. But um, that was pretty interesting, and the court there denied it. But again, courts differ. We've had these motions denied in all, in all um, transparency. We've had these motions denied. So enforcing them, getting to my second question, can be tough. But like I said, here is the three-factor test. It's at least from Northern District, California. Check the rules in your jurisdiction. But, you know, again, the courts are allowing these, notwithstanding that cobbler requires something more. Cobbler requires something more. Just remember that. Cobbler requires something more than just an internet subscriber. You have to have some kind of evidence. Now, um, one of the videos I've seen after, uh, or not videos I've seen, but one of the videos I'm going to be doing next is about the something more that we've seen Strike 3 do and how that worked out. So, but uh, you need to subscribe to our channel. Make sure you follow all the action here. You learn about law as we go through my daily life here. So here we have the Columbia case, three-factor test for early discovery. I uh, hope that gives you a little insight into the process. And again, there's usually a 26F conference, meet and confer. I've got one coming up later today. But, um, you know, there are ways to get early discovery, okay? So put this on your radar, Attorney Steve. Basic, general, legal information only, license in California and Arizona. Have a great day. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Be safe. If you need help with a strike three case, internet law, you know where to find us. Copyright infringement on the web right here. You can see it. Attorneysteve.com. Attorneysteve.com. Did you know I paid $6,000 for that domain? It's crazy, isn't it? Okay, have a great day. Bye now. I got to run.